You do my friends, Jovenshire here on the Jovenshire channel where we cover all things video games, superheroes, comic books, TV shows, movies, all things geeky here in one place. Now, if you've been paying attention to the channel, you might know that, wow, Joven, you've been doing a lot of board games. And trust me, I'm going to keep doing that because I love doing it and I know that you guys like seeing them. So yes, I've got the group coming together on Tuesdays for board and card games. There's more of that coming, but it is the Jovenshire channel where I want to cover other stuff like video games. So maybe we'll start doing videos on Thursdays to just be able to talk about, you know, the other stuff. Or like today, I want to talk about this game coming out called Outriders. But before we jump into the thick of it, I do actually want to say that this is a sponsored video. Square Enix allowed me to go down and check out this game Outriders before anyone else. So yes, just by watching this video, you are actually helping support the Jovenshire channel because this is how we keep the lights on here. This is how I get crews to be able to shoot those board game videos and edit some of the stuff that we do here. So thank you for watching this video and supporting because I love making videos and I want to keep doing it and this is how we can make that happen. So I want to talk to you about this game, but I also want to mention, and I just want to be very transparent that even though this is a paid sponsorship, these are my thoughts and opinions on the game. I want to tell you about the things that I liked about it. There's no script that I need to read from. There's no keywords that I need to say. This is just what I liked about the game so that you guys can hear about it. I just want to have that full transparency with you guys so that it just feels honest between us. And that's what matters most to me. So Outriders, what is it? What are we looking at here? You guys might actually remember that this game had a trailer at E3 last year, just a teaser, a lot of questions, but it had me hooked. It's one of the reasons why I wanted to do this event because I needed to know more. It is in fact a one to three player co-op shooter RPG made by People Can Fly and distributed by Square Enix. First of all, it's an RPG. You got Square Enix, that's a great combination. It's a shooter, so you got People Can Fly that have made some great shooters in the past. It's just a great combination of just video game magic coming together, and I was very excited to get my hands on it. Now let's talk release date. This game is actually coming out this holiday season. That's right, this is a next-gen game. This is one of the first games that I've actually been able to see that's gonna be on the next-gen console, so that was really exciting. Uh, but don't worry, if you aren't really jumping on the next-gen, wagon with the place with the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X. This will also be on PC and the Xbox One and PS4 in the current gen consoles. So there you go. The story is you've got these soldiers and scientists coming to this new planet called Enoch. It's just untouched by anyone else. So there's a bunch of resources so they can kind of, you know, maybe settle here. There's a lot of crazy monsters on there. The environment is super neat. And they're like, hey, we're gonna call this home. Then this storm comes in called, an, they, they call it an anomaly and it winds up just destroying everything. They have to go into, or your characters and a bunch of other characters have to go into cryogenic freezing. But while you're sleeping for 30 years, the, the world changes drastically because of the anomaly. The monsters change, the people that don't sleep uh, wind up getting changed too. And your character wakes up 30 years later and you're like, whoa, what happened? Hey, look, you're someone that I know from 30 years ago. Crazy how this life is. Uh, the story, interesting. I actually like the world that they're building and the situation that they're building, so I'm excited to be able to play more. Now, I only saw like one section of this game and they were telling me that it's like, this was like one out of like 22 chapters in the entire game. So there's, there's a lot to it. But let's jump into what the gameplay is. Like I mentioned, this is an RPG co-op shooter and their classes. There are three different classes that we were able to choose from. One of them that we weren't able to do, but that's probably gonna get announced later, maybe at E3, that's just my guess. There's a Pyromancer that was more like long distance dealing with fire. There was a Devastator, which was all about being a heavy tank. Uh, I didn't play those two classes, but I talked to other people that got to do some pretty cool stuff. I played as the third class, which was the trickster. Of course, Joven played a character that was a trickster. It was all about slowing down time and like jumping back and forth between places. And I was like, yes, please. If you're gonna give me a shooter that makes me feel like a superhero, I'm gonna have a good time. So my abilities were able to like, I can slow down time around me. I had this energy beam that if it did enough damage and killed them, you just see people explode. And then I could teleport behind people. So the most satisfying thing that I was able to do in this game was teleport behind a large group of people, slow them all down, and then just kind of swipe my blade through them so that they all just exploded in slow motion in front of me. And that, that made me happy in all my chaotic places and I just loved it. Again, yes, sponsored video, but there's things about this game that I really loved and I can't wait to play this again in the future. Just putting that out there. Something to also mention about all these different characters is the healing ability of each one. Each class has a different type of healing ability. For the trickster, I would heal anytime I'd move, uh, I did an ability on someone and I marked them. And then, all of, then once they died, I got extra health for it. 
but fear not if you're being hit by just one character or something that you can't kill you will get life back up to 40 percent and i found that very helpful especially when dealing with bosses other cool things about the game um outside of the classes and abilities there was it's, it's an rpg so there's a lot of gear and a lot of loot a lot of stuff that i picked up on the floor that i didn't need but there were ways to find like extra armor which i kind of skipped over completely that actually affects some of your abilities so you might keep on a piece of armor longer than normal because let's say it makes your third ability do more damage or your second ability has a longer duration or something so i think having that element in an rpg kind of changes up what you'll wind up doing maybe you'll wind up keeping three abilities longer uh, be using one ability instead of another ability because that was another thing there was around maybe 10 abilities per character but you can only use three at a time of course you can change it by going to the start menu and be like, all right we're gonna switch this around and switch this around which is a big part of the strategy because let me tell you there's some boss fights that they're gonna get you killed you're gonna die a lot and you kind of have to change your entire strategy in order to beat them but hey that's a good thing, right? There's also weapons that you'll wind up finding that will have some kind of universal effect. For example, I had a shotgun that I chose after doing a side quest that every time I reloaded it, it kind of did a little shockwave and pushed people away. The fact that there are side quests in this game, I think is going to add a whole lot more to it. It felt very natural and, and I was on a mission, but then I came across another soldier and they're like, I want this guy's head. I was like, hey, I'll go kill that guy for you. No problem went, had a mini boss battle off in the side area, and then had to bring back the guy's head afterwards, and I got to choose from an assault rifle, a sniper rifle, or a shotgun, all with these special abilities. So, if you do pick up this game, like any RPG, it just makes sense to do side missions because you're going to get more experience for it, or you might be able to get some great loot and gear. And to even go deeper into, like, these different classes, each class then had three subclasses that you can put uh, class points into so like trickster had like an assassin class and then two others and then you can wipe those at any time to then reset and kind of put those abilities how you want it so overall that's going to add a lot of replayability you can play the same character twice in a bunch of different ways or maybe you play a guardian by yourself in solo play and then you do the co-op stuff and you play as a trickster and each time you play as these characters it could be very different that's what i want to see out of a video game anytime i can get more bang for my buck that's good there were some flaws in the design i'm not gonna call it a flaw but i will notice like the first time i played the game i'm um, walking through this stage and then it opens up there's a bunch of place for cover and i was like oh i guess this is when the bad guys come and then a bunch of bad guys came and i had to kill them all before i can move forward and that was kind of like a continual theme in the game but at the end of the day it is a video game and that's what you do in video games you beat the bad guys so you can progress on I can't complain too much there. It was just a trope that I noticed. But that being said, the level design and world design was pretty unique and interesting to me versus other games that I've played. I've played other RPG shooters and you know, I've had fun with them. This one though gave me more depth and it gave me uh, a more exciting world to be in. And at the end of the day, that's what I want. I want to feel like a superhero and destroy a bunch of bad guys. And that's what this game did. So that was my first take and impression on Outriders. It does come out this holiday. Again, it's on the Xbox Series X, the PlayStation 5, PC. And we're also getting it on the current gen consoles as well. So you've got the Xbox One and the PlayStation 4. So look forward to that. So overall, I had a good time. It's a game. It reminded me that there, it's okay to stop playing the same game over and over and over to pick up a new game because there's some great stories out there. And this is, I think, going to be one of those great stories. I think this is going to get a lot of attention behind it when it comes uh, closer to release. And I can't wait to see what gets announced for it. So that's enough about Outriders. Now I want to talk to you guys. What else do you want to see here on the channel? Like I said, I'm going to cover some more uh, news about like the Marvel, uh, Marvel Disney Plus shows, maybe some video game news as it comes around. Just on Thursdays, I want to try to have something geeky for your faces, and then Tuesday we're going to keep doing board games. So look forward to that, and maybe even some D&D in the near future. Hey! I'm the Jovenshire. Thank you so much for watching. Until the next time, I'll see you later. Thank you so much for watching this video today. If you need some more Jovenshire in your life, we have two videos there on the right. And don't forget to subscribe because if you like this video, I guarantee you're going to like the other stuff that we do here. And if you get a chance, go ahead and follow me on Twitter and Instagram because we create a lot of content there that doesn't always make it to YouTube. Go check it out.